JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, reprisal killing among factors which led to Manchester curfew, says police source. Recent murders, including a reprisal killing, are among the factors which led to police imposing a curfew in three Manchester central communities. The curfew began at 6 p.m. Friday, January 20, and will continue until 8 a.m. Monday, January 23. A senior police source said that last Saturday's murder of 42-year-old bartender Nakisha Harrison, otherwise called Bumper, who was shot dead by a gunman at a house inland settlement near Royal Flat, is being theorized as a reprisal. Harrison reportedly wasn't the intended target of the gun attack. However, police say the December 6 murder of Marlon Irwin, otherwise called Muta, is being linked to Harrison's killing. It was a reprisal in terms of the murder of Muta. So the curfew is actually in place in Comfort, land settlement on Broadleaf, said the police source. Irwin, who was allegedly marked for death, according to the police, is being buried Saturday following a funeral service in Broadleaf. Irwin was reportedly on a death list and had been warned by police to leave his native community, Hampton in Broadleaf, and Manchester overall, months ago, after two men believed to have been sent from St. Catherine to kill him, were detained and later released. Mota was on the list to be killed because we prevented him from being killed sometime in September, and we held two men that we understood came down to kill him, but we never found the gun on them, a reliable police source said. In September, Irwin reportedly heeded the warning and fled for his safety, but unknowingly to the police, he returned to broad leave. Mota was taken in the same day in September, and we told him the information that we received. The men were out to kill him, so he must leave the parish. We did not even know that he came back, the source said. Police believe Ern was involved in a gang conflict over a prolonged period. A police report said about 7 a.m. on Tuesday, December 6, Erin was driving his Toyota Axe motor car on the Hampton Main Road when gunmen traveling in another vehicle attacked him. The gunman open fire and hit Erin multiple times. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. A resident who asked not to be named said Erin was a quiet person. I know the era him live. Him not get no trouble. Me no know him as a troublemaker to all that, said the resident. When asked what Erwin did for a living, the resident told a contrasting story. You don't know what most of them young boys do already. Them fine for them way of working on, he said in apparent reference to lottery scamming. Them no want to know farming. Them find easier way to make money, he added. Police sources said Erwin was suspected of being involved in lottery scamming. Another resident described Erwin as a caring and responsible father. He's here in Bonner Reyes, a humble youth. A five little youth him gone leave. Him bring three of them go up and mother for send him go to school. And by him come back in the lane that happened, the resident said. Woman beat a court and video pleads guilty. A man was seen brutally kicking a woman in a viral video was demanded in custody Friday after pleading guilty to assault. Jovan Stevenson, a 32-year-old graphic designer of Kingston addresses, entered the plea when he appeared before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. Stevenson was held in the Charles Street area of downtown Kingston on Friday morning. He had reportedly been eluding police since a manhunt was launched to apprehend him after a video allegedly showed him viciously kicking a woman in Alfred Tree, St. Andrew, on Wednesday. In the 18-second video, a man is seen stomping on a woman lying on the ground. The man repeatedly yells expletives at the crying woman before making his escape. After the man flees, onlookers are heard questioning the woman about the suspect before the video ends. Stephen seems to return to court on March 30 for sentencing. Arrangements have been made for him to pay restitution. He is to appear in court next Tuesday in relation to a previous matter involving the complainant. When I tell the woman, I say, yo, here we go and get the work. Yeah, we must start me to get some money, you know. Go back to court again. How oh, do you mean I tell the truth? I just could be here for no me to go back to court again. You see me? And then Jada come to me, boy. It now nah, be done unless me give her sixty grand. Don't forget it from this man. I go out for money like you, man. They are stressed and she don't even know what's time. I tell them what. It's come like a mad them people. I try mad me or something. See they know. No lose control and that happen now and then. See me if you hide. You see me. Yeah, brother. Come like she no member. Say she have two youth from brother. You see me. Come like she want them for fatherless. Residents at apartment complex distance themselves from alleged SSL fraudster. Residents of the Upper St. Andrew apartment complex, which was yesterday raided as part of the investigation into the multi-billion dollar fraud at Stocks and Securities Limited, SSL, are displaying claims 
that the alleged frauds in the case is the owner of the property. The disgruntled residents that were forced to come forward as you're concerned about their safety arising from the rumors circulating in the public domain. Kemar Robinson, attorney at law representing the strata, said that the ex-SSL employee at the center of the probe has no ownership rights at the complex. There are allegations in the media, especially in social media, that she is the owner of the complex, and we wish to say categorically that she is not the owner. In fact, she is not even the owner of any apartment there. She is a tenant. To the best of our knowledge, she leases an apartment there. She does not own the complex of that we are certain, Robinson said. The owners and the residents, they are concerned about their safety because it has been said that this person fleeced numerous persons of their funds and persons may try to go after whatever they think her assets are and that can lead to some amount of danger for the actual owners and residents there, he added. A multi-agency investigative team yesterday descended on the home of the former SSL wealth advisor and seized several documents and other materials. It was indicated that the material will be analyzed as part of the probe. Cops of my stunt driver diverted attention from Hello Heist. Police investigators have theorized that a driver seen performing various stunts at the Fairview shopping complex in Montego Bay in the wee hours of Friday morning was using the noise on the vehicle's engine to distract security personnel and to disguise the sound of the heavy equipment being used to execute a multi-million dollar heist. At daybreak, it was discovered that crooks had made off with cash amounting to over $2.5 million from a cambio. Dozens of high-end cell phones from a store and cash and other items estimated at several millions of dollars from the Hello supermarket. Grace Kennedy Group CEO Don Webby said the break-in seemed well orchestrated. Webby, who manages Hello Food Stores and Western Union chain, also stated that the management was distressed by the incident. The news of the break-in is very upsetting, coming soon after we just officially opened Hello Negro Thursday night, he said. I visited the location Friday morning to see what happened and speak with the staff. And from my observation, it is clearly a well-orchestrated robbery, he stated. Where we expressed hope that the thieves will be apprehended in short order. According to the police, about 2 a.m. Friday morning, a motor vehicle was seen carrying out various stunts in the vicinity of the supermarket. The crooks used powered tools, crowbars, sledgehammers, and steel cutters to cut a hole in a wall at the rear of the building. They then entered the office and cut open tool safes and stole the cash. It is believed that approximately five men carried out this robbery, three of whom were caught on the surveillance cameras looting the cambio, phone store and supermarket, an investigator said. The cops said that on Wednesday night, a group of men, believed to have been the same culprits, attempted to rob a cambio located in the same complex. The men, who we believe were armed with similar tools, also went to this other cambio between Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and carried out the same breaking attempt and started cutting a hole in the wall. But the attempts were foiled by security officers and the police who responded quickly to the scene, the scene of cops said. Gun and ammo seized after police chased robbery suspect on bike. A pursuit of a robbery suspect involving several police divisions culminated in the seizure of a gun along with ammunition and two cell phones on Monster Road, Kingston 3 on Friday. Reports of that about 2.45 p.m., police personnel in Europe responded to a robbery in the crossroads area. Police assigned to Kingston Central pursued the man on the motorcycle suspected of committing the crime. They were joined by teams from Kingston East and the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch Quick Response. The suspect reportedly abandoned the motorcycle at the intersection of Mountain View Avenue and Dinero Road and escaped in the area. Intelligence said the officers to a premises on Monster Road where one browning 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 9mm cartridges was seized. A knapsack containing two Samsung cell phones was also found. The police high command is commending the officers who responded for their coordination and persistence in pursuing the suspect. Persons who may have information about this or similar crimes in the area are encouraged to share this information with the police, said Superintendent Tommy Lee Chambers, Kingston East Commanding Officer. Meanwhile, the team continues to follow leads in order to apprehend the suspected robber. People who may have been victims are invited to visit the Alliston Road Police Station to possibly identify their property. Two men in custody after operation in St. James. Two men were taken into custody following the seizure of two guns during an operation in Maroon Town on Saturday. Reports are that a team, supported by the Caribbean Search Centre, conducted the targeted operations at two separate premises in the community, during which two 9mm Browning pistols were found concealed in motor vehicles. The identities of the men in custody are being withheld pending further investigations. 
Cops launch probe after masked men attack and damage ATM. Police are searching for three men who damaged a National Commercial Bank NCB automated telemachine ATM at a gas station in Stony Hill, St. Andrew, Friday morning. The men reportedly broke into the area where the ATM was with several tools in an unsuccessful attempt to get money from the machine. Police reported that around 3.10 a.m., the masked wearing men, two armed with a crowbar and the other with a hammer, went into the vestibule which housed the ATM. They then tried to break open the machine to steal the money, thereby damaging the enclosure for the ATM. After several attempts, they realized they could not access the money as the vault was behind the machine. The alarm system was however triggered and the men fled the ATM and escaped into the area. Shortly after, personnel from a security company arrived and contacted the police. Up to this evening, the men were not held. Opposition wants security companies to be compelled to treat guards as employees or lose license. The parliamentary opposition says the government should insist that security companies comply with a 2022 ruling of the Supreme Court by the end of March or have their license suspended. The Supreme Court ruled in March 2022 that guards are not independent contractors but employees, which would mean employers are required to make statutory contributions on their behalf. This week, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark indicated that government contracts with private security companies will be terminated if guards are not treated as employees effective April 1. However, in a media release on Saturday, opposition spokesperson on Labour and Social Security Dr. Angela Brown Burke said that is not enough. The decision by the government is a step in the right direction, but it does not go far enough as it leaves all security officers employed in the private sector without protection, said Brown Burke. She added that the court decision is applicable to all Jamaican workers under similar circumstances and the government has a responsibility to ensure its application to all. She said the Ministry of Labour should ensure that all industrial security companies are compliant by March 30, after which the Private Security Regulations Authority should be instructed to suspend the license of all non-compliant companies. She also called for the urgent re-establishment of a joint industrial council for the industry and for the Minister of Finance to provide the terms of reference and the names of the members of the task force announced to engage security firms over the next 100 days to amend a raft of contracts with ministries, departments and agencies. In sports news, Thomas Dodd wins into a shot put event. Jamaica's World Championships medalist Daniel Thomas Dodd got her indoor season off to a great start on Friday, winning the women's shot put event at the Puma American Track League Orkai Pro Classic at the Orkai Indoor Track in Iowa City, Iowa. With a throw of 19.12 meters on her first attempt, Thomas Dodd equaled her second best indoor throw of all time, matching her sixth place throw in last year's World Athletics Indoor Championships in Serbia. American Rachel Fatherly was second with a season's best 17.08 meters coming on her final attempt, with Katie Farr also the U.S. third with 16.25 meters. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.